it's Nathan Ray from the UK here. Yeah, appreciate the call. Right, so I just wanted to call in about the um, to follow up on the uh, MM, well, not the MMR, the you know the vaccine um, the case that you were talking about, and the politicians coming in on different sides of it. Uh huh. Well, so in the UK, where Andrew Wakefield published his articles about you know the dangers of MMR, which have since been withdrawn, have been shown as completely fraudulent. And, yeah, Nathan, um, hold on. Let me just catch people up. In I think it was yeah, 1998, um, uh, this uh, a researcher published uh, something in the Lancet uh, magazine, which is a, um, a very well acclaimed uh, British medical journal. There was yeah. a lot of of caveats on that. This study has not been peer reviewed, et cetera, et cetera. It was basically a working paper, but this uh, uh, piece claimed there was a link between uh, vaccinations and uh, autism. It has since been shown that his work was fraudulent. The Lancet uh, reversed themselves, but you know, like anything, that thing caught yeah. fire, and it, it's and out I, there. And ironically, ironically, the reason why he did this fraudulent study to show that the MMR vaccine was unsafe was because he had developed these single um, stage vaccines. You know, when you give different vaccines for each disease, not as a whole. Uh, you know, not just as a single vaccine. And he developed an alternative, which he was going to get ready to um, to sell and promote. So that so you know these people they don't trust big pharma and things like that you know for for big reasons but the whole reason that this controversy exists is because a guy was trying to scam the system and make money out of the system. I had no um, idea. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. So it's uh, and it and it turned out he didn't just he didn't just misinterpret the data that you know that he collected, which is understandable and bad science. It, it was fraudulent. He was making up. He was making up data. He was making up um, things to go into. Anyway, the reason it, it it slowly gained ground over a couple of years, but then it hit um, it hit the newspapers in the UK in a big way in 2001 and 2002 when Tony Blair had a son in office um, called Leo and Cherie Blair, his wife at the moment. She had a good friend whose name was Carol Kaplan, um, who. Uh, who had like an alternative therapy, you know, quack medicine kind of health and well-being uh, companies kind of thing. And she was Sheree Bear's style advisor. So she was on board with this anti-vaccine kind of thing. So when it came out that they'd had a baby and they're asked, well, have you given your baby, have you given Leo um, the MMR vaccine? They wouldn't confirm that they had given it to their baby or not. Mm. They said, oh, no, it's a private matter for us. And so... It, it, it gave a huge amount of cover for for people, and the, the whole momentum of the anti-vaccination movement was probably born from that. To the point where they did a review of all the uh, uh, from January to September 2002, when it was all kicking off, 32% of the newspaper stories about MMR mentioned Leo Blair. Wow. Um, the son, and only 25 mentioned Wakefield, who would come up with this, you know, amazing research or, or whatever like that. So Leo Blair and the politician's son became a key part of the, a key part of the story. And this is why it's so important that public officials who are who are promoting public health measures have got to come out strongly behind the public health measures. You know, here's and, the thing. Um, the, the, it, oh, what, it creates it creates the whole movement. You know, it just gives oxygen to this anti-vaccination movement. And there's a body count associated to this. You can say there's a body count associated to you know Blair going into um, Iraq with Bush and things like that. You you can you can kind of find out. But when measles comes back into a country and children are dying because of measles, there's there's a body count count associated to that. It's that important, and we must hold the uh, politicians accountable when they when they don't go when they don't back up the science that protects people. Nathan, I totally agree with you. 